figured out. It's kind of blurry right now. Okay, so first, uh, there's roughly two kind of distinct sections on the test, uh, depending on how you think of it. So, the first way to think about it is in terms of question format. So, right now, there's two types of questions. There's a very, very short, true-false, just like the quiz. Uh, this is, I originally had ten, I've been deleting them. The, the, more, the more I think about it, the more I believe. Which is the, it's not going to get any longer than eight true-false questions. It might get a little shorter. Um, so there's eight true-false. And I'm changing this from the quiz a little bit. So on the quiz, I just say, hey, give me a true or false, right? But in the false questions, I'm going to ask you to correct or follow-up responses, as in like, hey, if you say this is false, then I've got a secondary question for you, okay? And I've written either follow-up questions for all of them, or I've asked you to make corrections on all of them, okay? On some questions, it doesn't make much sense to just say give a correction, because it's like you would change the word is to is not. So, it is, yeah. So it's eight true false, and then the rest, which is at the moment seven. So I'm going to put like asterisks here again at the moment. Like I said, I've been deleting these, <laughs> and I probably will delete one or two of these. Um, so no more than seven. Uh, short answer. In the short answer questions, um, these seven, I'm counting multiple parts. So if there's a question with two parts, I'm actually counting that as two for now. Um, and in the short answer, I do ask you to show all steps. You don't necessarily need to know like the names of things. For example, we work with limits a lot, and there are specific limit laws. Right? So I'll expect that you like show your steps when computing a limit if you need to use a limit law, but I don't need you to remember uh, this is the multiplicative limit law. Just, you can use it, you can write it, show it, right? Um, right, so just showing all steps. Number one, this is huge for partial credit. Like, you don't get this on true-false quizzes, right? It, <laughs> in these short answers, if you get like all the way to the end, but you don't know that last step, you're going to get most of the credit for that problem, okay? All right. So on the true-false in the past, if you don't get to the last step, sorry. Like this is huge for partial credit for you, so that's really beneficial for you. Um, uh, so I ask you to show all of them. Um, that's it for the question formats. It's just short answer and true-false, no multiple choice. Is this what the questions are again? Like on the. Do you want more? No. <laughs> no. You know what? It's still not even in focus, so I'm going to just try and move it. Yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, so for now, it's, you know, it seems not long enough. Great, hold on, I'm just soaking that in. She doesn't think it's long enough. Okay, okay, okay. So maybe maybe just stop deleting questions, is what I'm thinking. But I want to give you time to think, right? If if I give you questions that you can answer in like one or two steps, that's what these are for. So these questions are not questions that you should be able to solve in like one or two steps. So I want you to think about it. Usually give like 40, 50 questions. Yeah, so goodness gracious. That's it. Those teachers. <laughs> Memes. Um, no, I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm going to shoot for you needing to be here for like 20 to 30 if you know exactly what to do on every problem right away. If you don't, you're going to sit there scratching your head for like at least five minutes per scratch of the head, right? So that's 35 extra minutes if you scratch your head on seven of them. 
Is that okay? Not okay. Some people say no. That's the way it's going to be. Other question. Who, who was that? Oh, me. Yes. Um, do you feel like we need a calculator? Okay, great question. So someone came in before during office hours and asked if they can use a specific calculator. I said no, they couldn't because it's a graphing calculator. You can't use graphing calculators. Okay, that's throughout the whole course. Um, you can use scientific calculators. Okay, so long as they don't have like a big screen where you might possibly graph something. Can I borrow that for a second? You can use scientific calculators. It's totally fine. But the person that came in and asked that question, I also responded to with this statement. None of the questions I've written so far even need computations beyond simple arithmetic, simple little things. I have not written a computational question yet. Uh, I'm intending to continue writing the rest of it uh, so that you don't need a calculator. Okay, um, but you know I'm also coming from this perspective that there are lots of laws, for example, for logarithms and exponentials, that make certain computations super easy. If you don't know those laws, those patterns, those rules, then you might be scratching your head for five minutes, wishing you had a calculator with you. Mm -hmm. Like, as a for instance, if I gave you log base 3 of 81, you know, oh man, what is that? Oh, you don't remember the log laws. But then you think, I do know the log laws. That's a perfect power of 3. What is that power of 3? Aha. Uh -huh. Right? Is that clear? No? What is that power of 3? Four. Four. Thank you. 3 is 3, 9, 27, 81. 1, 2, 3, 4. The log tells you the power of the base that gives you exactly that, so it's 4. Okay. There are other laws about like bringing powers down in front, which make computation simple, especially for solving things. Maybe we'll do some of those today. I'm seeing blank stairs. We'll do some of those later. Yeah, yeah. Um, other questions? Yes. Um, Yep, that's the uh, second part here. I said you can look at it from two perspectives, and we'll look at the first one, which is question formats. The next one is question stuff. Yes? Uh, sign, cosine, like yep, it's on there. <laughs> Some people like, audibly just said, ah. Uh, yeah, you will need to know those. Um, and in particular, you'll need to know the exact values for lots of the angles that we've talked about. Pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 6, knowing sines and cosines of those guys. So the thing that I've said multiple times, make that table. Mm -hmm. Fill it in one or two times. Now, now we'll fill it in one or two times before Wednesday, please. Yep. Um, you'll have your calculator that can compute those things. So, you know, there won't be any problem unless you don't know how to do those things and unless you don't recognize the decimal approximations of the exact values. Because I asked for exact values. Like I don't want 0.7 something, I want root 2 over 2. I don't want 3.14, I want pi. Yeah. That's not so hard, right? Just make some flashcards. We all learned our multiplication tables back in pre-calculus. So you know you can do it. Little flashcards. It's like six numbers, right? Root three over two, root two over two, one half, one, zero. Oh yeah, the last one's undefined, right? So that's not a number. Five numbers and an undefined number. So just correlate where they go to. You can do it. Um, okay. Okay, I think that's it for this. So I'm ready to move on to like what types of questions there will be. Are we ready, ready to move on to that? No other questions about this? Okay, you'll have all of class time when you come in. You can come in, I'll pass you the test. 
you'll take a seat, and you'll have the entire time. Okay? And I'm not shooting for you to use the whole time. I'm shooting for you to be here for half of that time or less. But I know that's not going to be the case, so I'm trying to make it not as <laughs> exhaustive as you might have thought. Okay, I'm going to stop this, and then I'll restart it, and I'll post multiple videos, by the way, on YouTube for your review. So I'm going to also start and stop it from section to section so that maybe you can get specific you know, review types. Um.